And then finally, last but not least, he always seems to be last on the press conference as I do, um, Paul Moulton from Arleman News... Uh, sorry, Arleman Television. I nearly moved it to the newspapers there as well, Paul. Don't ask for another conspiracy theory. We've got the denotice list thing already going out there. Uh, we've already met today, um, Strashford, and I want to go back to Josh's question. I, I, you gave me much more there. I mean, admittedly, I pushed you hard, but this situation with the steam packet and the exemption order... We did get you to say something on my interview this afternoon, which you haven't said here today. That in fact, technically, those steam packet people were breaking the law. Would you actually say that for us now? Well, actually, what I said, Paul, if you go back to your interview tapes, I think you'll find, is that in relation to the direction notice, they weren't complying with the direction notice. I pointed out it's a corporate direction notice on the steam packet company, and it's a duty of the company to ensure that their employees comply with any direction notices that is issued. That's what I said on your interview, and I think that's exactly me repeating it word for word. OK, but something's gone horribly wrong, which you need to correct, yes? Well, as I said again in our interview we've done this afternoon, I don't want to repeat our entire full-length interview. No, please watch it instead, yeah. We need to allow the investigations to take their course um, and find out what has gone wrong. Clearly, something has gone wrong somewhere. Um, as far as Alamann government was concerned, the steam packet were quite clear on what the obligations were. Um, but clearly, somewhere down the line, the steam packet claims they weren't. Um, and we now need to meet and resolve that so there needs to be an investigation on what has gone on in the past but as I said to you the other key point is that we work on what's going to happen in the future because okay. it is that is the crucial part for me that we find a way to move forward to ensure that steam packet crews can continue to operate and the steam packet as a business can continue to operate while at the same time providing health protection for the wider community of the island that for me is the crucial point for me investigations come secondary to that. Is it a police investigation, though? No, it is an, it is an investigation um, within the steam packet. We've asked the steam packet to investigate what has happened. And the other question, uh, going back to Beth Espy this morning on Manx Radio, uh, this thing about the noodle bar and how the staff had gone back to work. You said you were going to come back later in the day, unless I've missed it. Have you actually answered that question, why the staff can go back, but everyone that was in the noodle bar has been told to stay off and, and isolate? I'll bring the Director of Public Health in in a minute, um, but the difference between people was there's people who were done as part of the surveillance testing. Now, it, maybe it was the hour in the morning I was being asked this morning, um, but I didn't quite get the question at the time. Um, but, but I assume what was being asked was around the difference of some people who have to remain self-isolated, which will be the high-risk contacts um, who have been who are isolated for the full period, and those who, who come forward as part of the surveillance testing who then get a negative result and can then go back around their lives but I'll bring the Director of Public Health in in case I'm completely off piece. Uh, no that's correct obviously the noodle bar was identified as a low risk area um, and as we always do with that people were reminded to be vigilant and come forward um, if they develop symptoms somebody did and then we changed the guidance and asked for everybody who was there to come forward for surveillance testing and as you'll remember from the issues around Christmas and the New Year one of the keys to when you do surveillance testing is the time from when the case was there because if you do it you know 24 48 hours after the case was there you won't pick up positives even in people who will become positive so the timing lent itself to surveillance and that was done um, the people who have come back negative from that, including the staff, can go back to being low-risk contacts, which means they can go about their lives, but with vigilance for any symptoms and reporting of those should they emerge. So with that uh, positive from the member of staff, wasn't it, or whatever, uh, no. does that not move it from low to medium risk or something? Or no, no, it wasn't a member of staff. It was another customer, right. and on follow-up contact tracing geographical proximity between the recent case and the original one was confirmed so that doesn't widen it out any further in fact it okay. enables us to say we don't need to wind it out any further <laughs> Thank you.